Uh, to hear from a former teammate is really special. Ralph Gar played the big leagues for 13 seasons, won a batting title during his playing career, the nickname of the Roadrunner because the guy could fly, and he was a teammate of Hank Aaron's for seven seasons. Ralph, good to see you. Uh, we've heard so much about Hank Aaron, the player, what he meant socially for our country, uh, but as a, just a teammate, what kind of a teammate was Hank Aaron? Well, it, it, he was a tremendous teammate. He was just... He was, well, when Dusty Baker and I signed together in 1967, Dusty Baker came out of high school from California, and I came out of uh, uh, Ruston, Louisiana, down south. And, you know, Dusty from California, me from down south. And Mr. Aaron, we sit and talk to him. Henry was, he just, he wasn't a guy that was, was really forcefully giving you information, but if you went to him for information, he would take the time to explain everything to you and give you the best understanding of what he thought was best for the situation. Hey, Ralph, it's Harold here. Uh, thanks for joining us, man. This is awesome to, to hear from you. And I know you and Hank were awful close. Uh, I, before we get into when he was a farm director and different things like that, I, I want to keep in this area. So he's chasing 715. You're spending time with him. And he's going through all the different stuff that we've documented. It's well documented. I, I'm just curious how... He was handling things behind the scenes. You really got to be a part of that. So what was that like to have discussions when he knew uh, he had a target on his back, so to speak? Well, Henry, he, he was a guy, he never was, he was a, a teammate, a baseball man. So that, he didn't want no distraction. He used to try to ease down on the end of the dugout, sort of by himself. And, and I was wondering what he was doing, and me and Dustin, we would just run him down. You know what I'm saying? Me and Dustin get right down him. So, like, you know, we didn't know what was going on, but he was sort of eased down by himself, but we would never, oh, I wouldn't, didn't know what he was easing down there for, but I'd always sort of get close to him and everything. But in the final, and that's when they talked about that, I, I really didn't pay no attention to it, but he was really trying to make things as safe for us as possible. But he never brought into that in the clubhouse and told us he was getting bad letters or anything or some bad people calling. Henry never did have nothing to say negative about nobody. And none of the people that agreed or didn't get, agree with him breaking Babe Ruth record, he never did have no dislike or ill feeling towards anybody, sir. Ralph, it's Tom Verducci. One of my favorite stories from the night of 715 involves you. After Hank hit 715, and for years it was Babe Ruth's record, after he hit 715, before his next at bat, you said to him, go break Hank Aaron's record. Tell me about <laughs> what you remember specifically about that and anything else that night that really stays with you all these years later. Well, Henry, he, he just said that he was, he, he just was going to go and, and get it over with. He didn't want to waste no whole lot of time on the situation. So he said, boys, I'm going to get it over with. We can get on down the road to try to win some ball games. And that's what he was all about. He wasn't uh, nothing about too much about himself. He didn't like a whole lot of light shining on him, but he did a lot of things that was good for his organization and the team that he played on. Hey, Ralph, uh, he's such an icon off the field as well. And we were speaking earlier and you said something that really stood out to me that he reminded you so much of Dr. King. Can, can you tell us about that? Well, Henry was a quiet Dr. King. You know, he, he, he got a, uh, he, he, he had left uh, some, some, some endowments where even now he's passed away, his endowment will educate, will give kids, minorities. It wasn't black or white or blue, no other color. It's about anybody. The feel of the dreams like he left an endowment that kids could get money from his organization as long as he lived and even when he passed away, it would keep educating, educating kids under his name and everything. So, And he would do those things and he would tell us about integration, but he never was out front and jealous or, or, or negative for it. Nobody was doing anything. He was always participating in everything, but he would always do the things that he thought was best for the situation at all times. And he was a great civil, uh, civil rights leader type guy for all of us. So, so Ralph, uh, Tom Verducci was talking about this earlier, how he'd go to Atlanta in the 90s and Hank was the farm director. Uh, you were scouting and working with the Braves for a number of years. 
What was he like as a, a leader in that position? Well, he was a he was a great. Well, you know, we won. That's when Tom Glavin and Chipper John, a lot of them guys came in under him. Tom, uh, our, our pitchers. See, Henry Aaron was a guy when he was a farm director. He didn't believe in 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 rushing kids. You know how you come in and you get off to a good start and they rush you to the next level. He was very adamant about a kid learning how to play the game of baseball before he got to the major league. If you notice, very few of our young men, when Hank was there, that came to the major league that didn't stay in the major league. But he didn't rush them through or anything. He made sure they had a lot of experience and knew how to play the game when they got there. And if you look at the little kid, Ian, we still have that with us now. Ian Anderson, the young man that came up and mm -hmm. won all the game for us, he stayed in the minor league as a first-round tick. You notice we didn't rush him. Mm -hmm. But when he got there, you see the wonderful help that he gave us as far as winning the division again, Harold. Ralph Gar, we could spend two hours talking to you, man. This was so much fun. Thank you for your time. We greatly appreciate it, and sorry for your loss. God bless you, and thank you all so much for having me. And God bless you all in every way. Thank you so much. Ralph, Ralph Gar with us here on the special edition of MLB Tonight.